Hi everyone, can you hear me? I can see Vicky's here on Troll Patrol. Brilliant, thank you. Thea, Gypsy, Anna. Just hoping that you can all hear me. Hi Karen, hope you're well. If somebody can just put, hi Brenda. Somebody can just post that you can hear me okay. Hi Marcia. Bright and sunny here and only minus 12. <laughs> Better than the forecast of minus 17. Might have to run off for a minute to let the dog in though. Bless you, the poor thing's going to be frozen, Vicky. Hi Caroline, Linda Lee saying I can hear you, thank you, Heather P is saying yes can hear you, oh that's great, at least I know you're hearing me. Right, let's get rid of that, Karen saying can hear me as well, and Marcia and Brenda, brilliant. Okay, well I'll give it a few more minutes, just so people can start jumping on. Hi Anne, Gypsy's saying yes. Annette, yes can hear in Illinois, brilliant. Sandra, evening from a very snowy Nottingham, Derbyshire area, can hear you fine by the way. Brilliant, thanks Sandra. Yeah, it snowed heavily here. I'm in, I think, is it North Derbyshire I'm in, I think? Yeah, I'm in High Peak. And it um, came down quite heavy yesterday morning, but Hannah and I managed to get out for a walk yesterday afternoon and it's just very cold. I've not been able to get warm all day. Do you ever get those days? Charlotte's saying it's a little echoey. Hmm. Not done any different to what I've done last week, so I'm not sure. Just trying to see, I can't see any different, I don't know. Um, <coughs> Right, I'm not sure about that because I've not done anything different than last week and I'm sat in the same desk with the same setup. So we'll just have to see how we go, Charlotte. Christine saying hello can hear you nicely. Let me just see. Good evening, Ashley, and everyone watching. Janet, Philippa is saying, hi, Ashley, looking forward to this evening as usual. Can hear you fine. Hi, Ellen, can hear you in the southeast Kent. Can hear from Manitoba, but at Charlotte Keller, I agree, a bit of a tin can effect. Hmm, right, how do I resolve that one then? We have none which is unusual here in southern oh is that snow been crafting all day karen saying making cards and a video oh well done karen i can hear your clock ah yeah i do have a clock on the but that's on the desk i normally craft at this is the desk where my computer is right let me move the clock And right, so I've moved the clock. <laughs> Let's see if there's any other suggestions before we start. Um, Lisa's saying good morning, everyone. It's her mum's 92nd birthday. Oh, well, happy birthday for that. So I may not catch it all. That's fine, Lisa, don't worry. Heavy snow here all day. That's in South Derbyshire. Gypsy's saying maybe turn the volume down. Okay, I'll try turning the volume down. 
Okay, I've turned it down a little bit. See if that makes any difference. I can always turn it down a bit more if you want. So I'll keep on chatting and see if you think the sound's got any different now I've turned it down. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Yolandi. From a wet and rainy South Africa. Janet's saying sounds fine to me. Sounds okay on my end, Karen's saying. All sounds fine to me. Okay. Righty-ho. Well... I think we'll just plod on. We'll crack on and see what happens. I have turned the volume down a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've moved the clock. All sounds fine here. Mandy G is saying, hi, Ashley. Sorry, I'm late. You're not late. It's fine. I've not even started. Right. I've got a couple of um, things to mention. Moving the clocks seem to make it better for me. Okay. Basically, in my office here, if anybody saw my little craft room tour I did a while ago, when I moved into this one room, I've got two desks. So I've got the desk where I have my computer, which is where I do all my, you know, paperwork and blogging and that kind of thing, and where I do things like this, screen shares. And then I've got the desk that's attached to it, which is where my scan and cut is, and that's the desk you normally see me work at. And they do have a clock on that desk. But the two desks literally sit side by side. But I'm probably where I'm speaking now nearer to that clock. So I've moved it onto the windowsill out of the way. Caroline's saying, I'm having Reno's in the bathroom near my craft room. So hoping it will be done this week as I'm staying away as it's too messy there. Gypsy's saying, no, not you, the viewer's personal device. Okay, Mandy's saying, sounding good. And Sarah's saying, hi, Ashley, I finally caught you live. Oh, well, well done, Sarah. Thank you. Lovely of you to be here. Right, well, as I say, I think we'll just have to see how we go. So I've just got a couple of things, first of all, to let everybody know. Card sketch number eight i've had several photographs already for card sketch number eight and for the time being anything to do with card sketch number eight if you've got any photographs if you just send them to me via email but going forward when i launch card sketch number nine which will be at the beginning of february Those are going to be launched on my new forum. Let me just see what Vicky's saying. I think it's just your distance from the mic. Okay. Well, I've turned the microphone down and I'm moving it. It's coming through my iPad because I use that as a switcher. And then I read the comments on my phone, which is down on silent. So hopefully things should start to sound a little bit better now, Vicky. Okay, so as I was saying, card sketch number eight is still live. If anybody wants to send me their photographs, I think the deadline for the sketch challenge is the 25th, which will be tomorrow. Going forward, when I announce the card sketches on my blog, there are, there's going to be a section on my new forum. If any of you have seen the video that went out a few days ago, you'll now know that there's a forum set up on my website. It seems to be working OK, but bear with me because it is new. But from what I can see, I'm getting requests from people to join and I'm seeing people post comments and pictures. I know Barbara and... Derek, I think it is, have posted photographs in the last couple of days of projects that they've made. So the forum seems to be working OK. Just to tell you very quickly, the quilt along is definitely going ahead. And again, all the information about the quilt along is on the forum. So if you're not a member of my new forum, you need to go to my website, applelover53.co.uk, and you'll now find a forum tab. You have to... If you're not already a member, if you've not already asked to join, 
you need to go to the forum and you need to, the, the box that comes up will say log in, but there's in grey letters it says sign up. So you need to sign up. And then once you signed up and I approve you, you'll then be able to gain access to the forum. And, and just to give you briefly, the reason that I did the forum was because of the quilt along. I thought it would be a way of putting information out there for everybody and it would be a good place for everybody to be able to post photographs of the blocks if they're going to take part in the quilt along. But I'm also now trying to see if it might be a good idea just keeping the forum going because I'm getting lots of messages one way or another from all different forms of social media. As I said in the YouTube channel, I posted a couple of days ago and I can't always keep up with it all. So I'm thinking that if you join the forum, it might be an easier place for us all to, to talk and communicate. So the forum is up and running, okay? The quilt along is going to start in February. It's going to be the last Tuesday in every month. So the first block that I'm going to do is going to be February the 23rd. I was going to try and do them as live YouTubes, but it just isn't going to work. So basically what I'm going to do I've chosen four blocks, but as again, all the information is in the quilt along section on the forum. I've chosen four blocks that I know are in the SDX and the DX and in the CM900 model. And I think they're in the 600 as well. And I'm going to do a block a month. I'm basically going to make the block from start to finish using the scan and cut. So I'm going to show how to, you know, load your mat mark up your fabric, cut your fabric and I'm going to make the block and they're all going to be pre-recorded so that hopefully you can follow along and I'm going to do them one a month for four months and that way if you decide to take part you, you've got a month before the next block's going to go live and I'm basically just going to make four 10 inch blocks and turn them into a big 20 by 20 inch cushion but if you want to make multiples of the same block and turn it into a quilt that's up to you. I'm going to have a coupon code, uh, Maker Superstore have offered to give me a coupon code. So if anybody needs to buy any supplies, things like, you know, mats or blades or high tax support sheet, if you're using a CM model or maybe fat quarters, they're going to give me a coupon code. That's not on the forum yet. I think that's going to go live about the 1st of February. And anybody that takes part and posts pictures of their block, and follows it all the way through to the end. There's going to be a prize also do donated by makers, but I'm not going to tell you what, what that is yet. Um, so that's just some bits of information to let you all know. So let me just run back very quickly and then we're going to start. So tonight we're going to be looking at the rhinestone feature in Canvas Workspace. I'm going to use Canvas Workspace online initially both versions should work the same, but if we get time, we'll have a quick look at the download version as well. So Charlotte's saying it must be on my end, not a problem at all. Ashley's asking, have you ever used Cricut infusible ink pens in the scan and cut? No, I haven't because I've not got any like infusible products. I think don't you need special like infusible products. It's something I may look into, Marcia, in the future, but I've got that many things planned at the moment and things going around in my head. Um, I kind of not got, I don't think I've got enough months in the year, to be honest. Uh, Vicky, yeah, the deadline for this for the card sketch number eight is tomorrow. Ellen's saying, hi, Ashley, Ellen here, and hi, everyone. Yeah, got that. When I turned my volume down, it helped Marcia saying, hi, Anita, hope you're okay. Rachel saying, hi, Ashley, sorry I'm late. Rachel, you're not. I've just been going over some information about what the quilt along is going to consist of and about the new forum and that kind of thing. Vicky, I know you've joined the forum. Thank you. It's fine. There's not a lot on there on there at the moment. Basically, there's a section for anybody to introduce yourself if they want to. There's a section for the, the um, scan and cut machine. There's a section for Canvas Workspace. There's a section for you to post your projects. So that's just general projects if anybody makes anything. Then there's the section for the quilt along. 
where if anybody does do the quilt along, there's a section for you to post pictures of your blocks within the quilt along section. Don't put them in the general your project section. They might get missed, okay? Hi Gypsy, Ashley, it sounds echoey like because you may not have many sound absorbing items. I've just brought another quilt over. I've got a quilt on the chair behind me and I've just brought another one over to put in front of me. But um, it, I think it might be because this room is smaller. The room I used to craft in is a lot bigger, so maybe that absorbed the sound better. But since I've condensed my office and my craft room into one room, this room is smaller. Anyway, we'll plod on and see what happens. Just notice there are two Ellens on here tonight. Yes, I noticed that before as well. Sounds fine, Anita's saying, Rachel's saying, think my internet is having a wobbly. Screen keeps going funny, so we'll have to watch record. Okay, no worries. Right, so you should be able to see my Canvas Workspace page. What have I got open? Let me just close my email behind. So basically, I'm going to go into a new blank page in Canvas. Just making sure that you're all going to catch up because I, as I say, I've got it on an iPad and I've got it on a phone as well. The iPad is instant when I change, but the phone, which is the live stream, has a bit of a delay on it. But it all seems to be working okay. Right, I can see, yeah, you should be able to be seeing my canvas screen anytime now. Right, I'm just going to make the page a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm in Canvas Workspace Online. Once you've acted the rhinestone feature, you, you should see it appear over here in your left hand menu. Now, if you don't see any of these words, it's probably this arrow needs expanding over here on the left. So once you open that arrow, then you should be able to see the My Projects tab, which is where anything you've saved in Canvas Workspace shows up. You should be able to click and see all the basic shapes and you should find the rhine, rhinestone and any other features that you've got activated, like I've got the foiling kit activated. What's Vicky saying? Can you expand that to full screen? Okay, let's see which one is it on a Mac. There you go. Is that any better, Vicky? So, as I say, you should, you should see anything that you've got activated down here on the left. So if we go into the rhinestone feature, once you've purchased the rhinestone kit and you've got the activation card and you've come into Canvas Workspace and you've come up here to your account where your name is and you've activated it, you may need to close out and come back in and then this is what you'll see. So basically they give you some free designs. So they give you an alphabet in upper and lower case and they give you some numbers and little punctuation. Sally's saying hello, Karen's saying yes better, okay. And then you, they give you all these designs. Terry P is saying better. Okay, I'll crack on. I'll just keep going on, unless I see there's a, a problem. So then you get all these designs, okay? So I'm going to just look at these first of all before we go on to making anything ourselves. So if I just click on one of the uppercase letters, so the capital letter A, most things when you select anything from over here, yes, that makes it bigger and gets rid of the distractions in the background. Okay. Do you know what it is, Vicky? I never use my screen in full view. I always have it kind of condensed down. So it's just one of those things that I do. But okay, that's great. As long as you can all see it. So it's brought this letter on in the rhinestone format for me already. And if I click away to deselect it and then click back on it just to show you, you will see it's got, let me just see if I can zoom in. 
you'll see it's got the blue dashed bounding boxes around it but there's no adjustment handles in the corners. If I right click I can ungroup it and all these stones now become individual stones. If I select and drag an imaginary box around everything and right click and group I can regroup it but I cannot resize it. Okay, so all these designs that they're giving you pre-installed within the rhinestone functions are not sizable. You can ungroup them and adjust them, but you can't resize them. So let me just zoom back down for now. So if I just come down and I grab a butterfly that's just if you just left click on it over here in like this panel on the left they'll just automatically just drop in the top left hand corner if you select and drag one that will put it anywhere on your page okay so that's just the difference however you choose to do it so again if we look at the butterfly you can see it's got the bounding boxes around it, but it's not got the adjustment handles. And by that, I mean, if I just go to basic shapes and just bring a shape on, if you look at this one, which, you know, is can be a cut or a draw, as well as having the blue dash boxes around it, you'll see we've got the adjustment handles in the corner, which means we can shrink and make this bigger. We'll get rid of that. If I click on the rhinestones, you can't do that. Sandra's saying, are they also preset to rhinestone size as well? We'll get to that in a minute, okay? So like I say, you can ungroup them and you can delete things. So let's say you like this butterfly, but you decide you don't want these bits in the middle here. Once you've got it ungrouped, you can select and then hit delete on your keyboard to delete them. If you think, actually, I preferred them in there, you can just keep coming back and put them all back in, okay? But you can't resize the design. So I'm just gonna reselect re everything and regroup it. Now, let me just zoom out a little bit. So if we come to the premium tab now at the top, still with this butterfly here, this is where you'll also find now the like editing functions, if you like, of the rhinestone pattern. The first one just enables you to select and place one rhinestone at a time. The second icon, which is greyed out here, lets you apply the rhinestone wizard. It won't let us do it in this particular case because this is a pre-made design. So that's why that's greyed out, but we'll get we'll get making our own in a, in, a, in a short while and that's when we'll use the middle bit. And then the third option is the rhinestone count. So this particular design that's here is telling us that it's made up of 50 SS10 rhinestones and four SS20 rhinestones. So if we say okay and click away, so the SS20 are these two big ones here, which are the ones that are, it said there were four of, and then the SS10s are the bigger one, which it said there were 50 of. So if I come back to the premium function, up here, the, the bit that in the middle here that's greyed out is the bit that normally allows you to change the size of the stones. So in this particular instance, it looks as though that's greyed out. So to me, it's looking as though it won't let us change the size of the stone. Now, if we ungroup it, right click and ungroup, and we just get rid of the big ones, what you can do is we should be able to come up here and choose a stone 
and it will let us place a stone. So if we decided we didn't want the two big ones in the middle, it will let us place a stone. And then if we come back to the premium function and come to the count, you can now see we've got two extra SS10s. But it doesn't seem to want to let us Oh, I've just placed another rhinestone there. So let me just get rid of that because I'm still in the rhinestone function, if that makes sense. So it won't let us change the size of the pre-installed designs, but it will let us edit them to a degree. So hopefully, Sandra, that's answered that question. So if we just go back and go back to rhinestones, and then if we just choose a letter H and drag it on, that will be the same. So this is a pre-installed design. If we come to the premium function and come to the rhinestone count, this is telling us it's using all SS10s and this 78 of them. And it won't let me kind of over type any of these other numbers. So it's not going to let me change the size of these stones. Okay, so if let's get rid of those. So if we come to our basic shapes and then we scroll down and we drag on a heart and we want to make this into a rhinestone design, once we've got it selected, we would come back to the premium tab and this time you'll see all three options are now available. Um, thanks, sorry we're jumping the gun as it were. No, you're fine, Sandra, that's fine. It's good because, you know, if I did forget to tell you, at least then you've prompted me. So if we want to turn this into a rhinestone design, now this middle section here is available. It was greyed out before on the pre-installed designs. So if we go to the what they call the rhinestone wizard and select that, it now brings up this box and you get all these different options. I think from memory, by default, it defaults to size SS10 and the spacing is the distance between the stones. I think, I can't remember if it's the distance from edge to edge or if it's from centre to centre, but the distance spacing by default from memory is always this 0.04. So let's just say we want to turn this into an outline and that's the first option. You've got all different kinds of arrangements. And one thing I would say about this rhinestone function is you've got to play with it. There's no easy solution. You know, I can't say to you, always bring your shape on at four inches and always apply, you know, the, the lattice fill and you'll get the perfect result, result because the result you get is determined A, by the size of what you're trying to make, what size stone you're going to use, what distance the spacing is, and then it's a whole other ball game if you're using fonts. So this kind of no, you know, one shop fits all, so to speak, if that makes sense. So... We're just going to take it in its simplest form for now, just going to choose outline. So outline is selected, but basically you've got along the line and the line is the path line of your whatever's on your desk. In this particular case, it's the shape. The next section along is the lattice fill, which from what I can gather basically is just vertical and horizontal. The next section along is contour fill. So that just goes round and round. And these will give you different results based on the line of whatever you apply. So if you're using a font and it's more of a curved font, then you might get better results using, you know, contour than lattice, if that makes, if that makes sense. The next one along is circular fill. And I think basically what that does, if you wanted to fill, I'll, I'll show you all the results in a minute, but um, if you wanted to fill the heart completely with stones, 
the circular fill, I think my understanding of it is that it starts doing it circular from the middle, going out and out and out and out towards the edges. And then the last one is fit fill, which I think it just basically tries to fit whatever it can in the space it's given the best way it can do it. Uh, Sandra's saying, I'm guessing SS10 the most popular. I think so. SS10 and SS6 seems to be the sizes that they use in the pre-installed um, letters and designs. But yeah, possibly. I think SS10s, from memory, whenever I've done hot fix rhinestones in the past, are probably what I've used the most. Joanne is saying, hello, Ashley. Thanks for the tutorial. And you're welcome, Joanne. So I'm going to leave it on the first option. I'm going to leave it on SS10 and I'm going to leave it on 0 0.04 and I'm going to say OK. And that's what it gives us. So basically it's placed all my SS10 stones around that path line as best it can. And you can clearly see that that actually looks OK. So... Let's go back to premium and go back to the wizard. So let's say we think, well, actually, we don't just want the outline. We want all the inside covered in stones as well. So I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to leave it on SS10 for now and I'm going to say OK and see what result we get. So now I'm going to fill it with colour because sometimes I think that if I fill it with colour, you can see it better. So can you see basically what it's done here? This was like the vertical and the horizontal straight lines. So you can see it starts off here. It's, you know, it is going around the corner, but you're not going to get the curve as much based on this pattern. So let's go back to premium and wizard and we'll go to contour fill. And I'll leave everything else the same and I'll say OK. So now can you see it's trying to follow the curve better than it did on the one before, which was all done in vertical and horizontal rows. So this is what I mean. You do have to play around with this to get the best result for what it is that you're trying to make the design in. This one, the next one is the circular fill. So if I say OK... So now, can you see what I mean about radiating circles coming outwards from the middle? And then we'll go back to premium and we'll go to the last one, which is fit fill. And we'll say OK. So again, this one, it's trying its best to follow the contour. So if you were wanting to fill this heart, and you kind of quite like this one. Let's just go back to the other one. And I'll, oh, it's got to be selected first of all. So let's find which other one did we think looked. Was it that one? And say OK. So can you see this one's following as much as it can? And then it's coming into the next line and following round and round and round. And then if we go to the last option, which is it's going to try and give you the best it possibly can. And obviously you get more options with, you know, some of the functions that you pick. So again, you can play around with the horizontal and the vertical spacing. You can play around with the angle. But if we say OK to this one, I kind of quite like the vertical and horizontal lines that this one's putting in. But you can see here it's not quite picked up the top of the heart. Let me just see if there's any comments. Heather's saying, I've got to make an engagement card. Could you write on the heart using the calligraphy kit? Then scan the heart to add the stones around the outline. Uh, yes, I think you can. Could you write on the heart using the calligraphy kit, then scan the heart to add the stones round the outline. So you'd be putting the rhinestones on the card, would you, Heather? Is that what you mean? 
I think what I'd be inclined to do is possibly write what you're going to write in your calligraphy pen, just on scrap paper and see how big it is. And then place your heart round it on your, on your machine to see how, how big you need the heart to be. Then come into canvas, put the heart on the page at the size that you want it to be, then apply your outline for your rhinestones and then send that over to your machine. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm just basically talking about making rhinestone templates here. But I have, I'm sure I've got on my YouTube channel somewhere probably be in the scan and cut machine playlist possibly or it actually might be in canvas playlist i think i did a card using stones sorry late just finished tea it's it doesn't matter lynn don't worry right though let me just crack on with this so i kind of quite like the look of this but it's just not quite got the shape here so this is now where, if you come back to premium, this is where you can place a rhinestone. So if I select that rhinestone and come over here, I can now place a stone. So I can put stones in to give this design a bit more shape. So if I just deselect, can you see? So what I can do now I'm just going to zoom in on that top bit, deselect my zoom, and then I can drag these over just to position them kind of manually to give me that um, shape. So you can add in individual stones. So it kind of is a, you know, it's, it is editable when you make your own designs it's just the pre-installed designs that you can't mess about with i'm just going to zoom back out so and again obviously when you've got when you're doing this yourself you can you know, position these better. I can see that, you know, these could maybe do with coming, you know, being adjusted a little bit. But obviously, I'm just trying to do this for the video. But can you see what I mean? The kind of effect or what you could do is you could bring them down into straight lines and just get the effect you want. Or you can say, actually, I don't want any of them. I'm going to delete them for I've just put in. I'm going to go back to the pre-made wizard and I'm going to come back here and I'm going to change to this one and say OK. So you can do whatever you want. It, it's entirely up to you. Now, let's just say you've decided, actually, I've not got SS10s or you look at the count and you say, and it, it's telling you here that you're going to need 307 SS10 stones to make this heart in this size. One thing I would say, because you've got the bounding boxes here, you can resize this design because this is something you're making into a rhinestone design yourself. So you can shrink it down and see how it looks in SS10s and it looks ridiculous. Or you can make it bigger and it will adjust the count of the stones for you. So if we go back to premium and go to count stone, count stone count, you will see that now, because we've made it bigger, it needs 536 stones. So let's just undo and get back to where we were. So let's say you think, okay, this is telling me I need 307 stones. And then you realize you've not got 307 SS10 stones. So come to premium, come to the wizard and change the stone size here. So let's go down to SS6. Let's say OK and let's see how it looks again. It looks a bit odd. So let's go back to premium, go back to the wizard 
and we'll change it and see how it looks again using a different style. That looks better. So if you wanted a complete filled in heart, you know, you've got options to play around with it. If you've not got many stones, you might just want to stick with the outline. And I personally think that possibly the SS6 looks better in this particular instance than the SS10. So if let's see if we can right click and make a duplicate. With the duplicate selected, we'll go to premium, we'll go to outline and we'll change this one to SS10 and say OK. Actually, they both don't look too bad. So it would be a case of personal preference. I suppose it would also depend what the item was going on. You know, if it was going on a big object, you might not necessarily want to use tiny stones. You might want to go bigger. So you kind of do have to play around with it. If you want to make, I mean, I'm just using one of the basic shapes, so let's just get rid of that one for now. So let's just say, um, where's the heart gone? We'll bring another heart in and I'll shrink it down a bit. So let's say you wanted to do, say, like welded hearts. You have anything to do with joining items together, you've got to do before you apply the rhinestone function. So if I just right click and make a duplicate of this heart and then just say maybe shrink it down a bit and select both of these, come to edit and weld to make this kind of like joined up heart. If I now want to apply a rhinestone function to this, I can do. I'd just do exactly the same. I'd get a premium, go to rhinestone, choose whichever option or size I want. I'll go with SS6 and I'll go with outline and I'll say OK. And again, if I just fill it with colour, I'll just fill it with black because that's easier for now. You'll see how that looks. But again, if I decide I want to make this smaller or bigger, I can do because it's the design I've made myself. Philip is saying, can you mix and match stone size in one design? Yeah, you can. Um, and again, you know, it's something you're going to have to play with. But let's just say, if I just make a duplicate of this first heart, heart and then make it smaller, and let's just say we were going to put that in the middle, and then come to premium and wizard, and maybe we'll leave the middle one as SS6, but we'll change the outer one to SS10. So can you see we've now got the bigger ones on the outside and the smaller ones on the inside? So yeah, you can mix and match. Now, let me just move that off and we'll just have a look at this. So this one that I welded together, I'm just going to zoom in on this section here. So let's just say you've made this design and you're happy with all this, but this stone here looks too close to this one here. Don't if you can see these two stones here that are side by side look as though they're touching and you might want to edit it. So if you select it and right click and ungroup it, when you are making your own design, the minute you ungroup it, what it wants to do is turn it back into a path. In other words, into a cup file, not a rhinestone design. So if I just left click anywhere on the page to deselect, you'll see now, you can see all parts of my stones here, but this is all filled in. If I left click on this and drag it away, it's put a path, an outline. If I take the fill out of this, can you see what it's done? Because 
I went into my my own design and said ungroup it thinks I want to make a cut file so you've got to get rid of this otherwise if you left that in place when this design cut out in your rhinestone media it would try to cut all these circles but then it would cut a line all the way through them so you wouldn't have a rhinestone design you'd have a cut up mess basically so I'm going to get rid of the path come back to these which if I click on them now you'll see these are all my individual stones and then if I zoom in on this area here can you see that these two are touching so I'm just going to deselect my zoom and then now all as I would do I would move this one out of the way you can either move it with your mouse or you can select it and you can just use the dimensional sorry the directional arrows on your keyboard to move it until you're happy that they don't touch you might want to move it up a little bit so I've just kind of moved it out of the way this bottom one here you might want to bring over a little bit so it's kind of a bit more central and just do that with either your mouse or your keyboard I'm just going to go back to 50% or a bit more so can you yeah, I don't know how well you'll see but I've moved these two apart now so now you need to regroup everything so you need to drag an imaginary box around everything and right click and group and this is now a group but because you've ungrouped it and you've edited it it's no longer editable in that you can't resize it so if you're going to make a design of your own and you're going to like weld things together make sure that your design that you make is the size that you know you're going to want the finished thing to be because if you ungroup it and then kind of try and tidy up any stones that might be in the wrong place you can't then resize it so is that okay so far i'm just gonna have a quick drink of my juice everything looks as though it's all still recording i can see it all on my phone so everything looks okay but i can't see any comments so i don't know if you're just watching me or hopefully you are so if anybody's got any quick comments or questions just ask me now while i get a quick drink Hi Dawn. So I answered, can you mix and match the stone size? I've explained that the designs, Sandra's saying mesmerised. <laughs> I've explained that the pre-installed designs within this function over here can't be resized. Charlotte's saying it's very clear. Charlotte, was it you that asked me to do this rhinestone? I can't remember. It was either Charlotte or Carmen, possibly. Lynn's saying engrossed tonight, that's why we're all quiet. <laughs> Charlotte's saying, not that I won't make the mistakes you're trying to help us avoid. That's okay. Chris is saying Michigan here. Not me, but I've been mesmerised myself. Okay, I thought it was either Carmen or Charlotte or... 
I thought I'd written it down as well and I don't appear to. I usually, when someone asks me for something, I usually um, jot a note down on my desk pad, but I can't see it. Oh, was it you, Lynn? I thought it was somebody else. Sorry if it was you, Lynn. <clears throat> right, I can't see any more comments or questions. Okay, so I've just seen Cherise popped up with something. Ashley, going back to the welded hearts, if you don't weld them, could you still get in to move the stones and delete what you don't want? Okay, so let's go back. So we'll get rid of this and we'll get rid of these. So we'll go back to the basic shapes. So we've got a heart. So what we'll duplicate the heart. So Let me see what you're saying. If you don't weld them, could you still get in to move the stones and delete what you didn't want? Okay, so you mean, so you've got like a line in between. Can you apply different coloured stones easily? Well, basically, that's a case of where you dump your stones on your, once it's cut, I think, Charlotte, because... The machine can't cut by colour, it just follows the path. So you can, you could put two different size stones in a design, but then what you'd have to do is probably dump the majority of the, whatever's the, the most stones, put those down first, brush those into the holes, and then you'd have to try and put your other coloured ones into your other holes, if that makes sense, or maybe do them one by one. Have I missed you using the machine to affix the stones? If so, could you remind just doing a quick recap of how it works? Lynn, it was a live I did a couple of weeks ago. I showed, well, I did it, early, I think I did it last year, but then a few weeks ago when I got the Easy Press, I showed how to cut a design and how I pressed it. Is that what you mean? Have I missed you using the machine to affix the stones? It was in a, if you look in the live playlist, Lynn, you should see the, the rhinestone design I did a few weeks ago, I think. I did it on that Cricut um, Easy Press cover and I did Apple Lover 53, I think, didn't I, from memory. I just can't see it. It's tucked, tucked in one of my cube storage. I can't see it from here. No, it wasn't you. Okay. Right, let's see what we get with this. So we'll select both, we'll go to premium, we'll go to rhinestone and we'll say outline and SS10 and OK. So basically it's put this, the size, sorry, it's put the stones around both path lines, but obviously it's going to overlap where the, the lines overlap. So then you would go in manually and delete them. Is that what you meant, Cherie? So if I zoom in here, you'll see it's put two in. So if I select I can't see now I'm zoomed in. Let me just come back to about 70%. So what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to ungroup it again, because obviously the heart comes in, because it's a pre-installed shape, it comes in as a complete path. So where they overlap here, you've got two stones, so you need to get rid of one of them. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit more so you can see what I'm talking about. So here you've got a stone on top of a stone. So if I... If I move, can you see, wherever it's going to go, it's going to kind of overlap. Are you with me?
let me just, I can, I, I can see comments now, so let me just see, of course that makes sense, perfect sense, I was thinking of dividing the two hearts and putting a different colour in the overlap, I'm always doing things the hard way. Uh, Teresa's saying you can't fix the stones in the machine itself. No, you've got to make, I don't, don't think you can ungroup them in the machine, you've got to make the design in workspace. Make your design as you want it, to the size that you want it, apply the rhinestone design and then send it over. So Cherie is saying yes, and that would let you resize both together. Yeah, you can do that if that's what you want to do. So they both are path at the moment, but separate. So if you selected both, you, in Canvas Workspace Online, you've got to make them a group to resize them together. To, to get rid of any overlapping stones, you've got to ungroup them. So I would suggest that you right click and make them a group first. Now it won't let me resize them. So that's interesting. So let's ungroup. So you're going to have to resize them individually. So if you decide that you think they look too big, you're going to have to resize them individually. But to remove the overlapping stones, you're going to have to ungroup them. You're going to get that path line again. Look, can you see because I ungrouped? So I'm going to get rid of that. And then you can see there's a kind of overlapping mess going on here. So if I zoom in on this section, this would be where you'd want to remove some of the overlap stones. So I'm going to deselect my magnifying zoom. I'm going to select that one and delete it. And this one I'm going to delete. So if I now zoom back out and then zoom in on the whole thing properly, you can see I've deleted where they overlapped. This one is all individuals. This one is still as a whole. But looking at it, it looks as though it's got a path line on it. So I'm going to ungroup it and get rid of that path line. So now I'm back to the stones. I don't know if you could see that. I'm going to undo and undo and go back a step. If I zoom in on this one, can you see the grey dotted line? That's a path line. And I think it put that in before when I was ungrouping. So you've got to kind of keep your eye on the rhinestone designs. Because to all intents and purposes, this just looks as though I've just removed where the overlap's on this one. And you would think this one looks okay, but I can see a dotted line running all the way through this heart. And I'm not too sure if that may cut or not. So if you see that, I would be inclined to ungroup it click away to deselect and then choose it and hit delete because the last thing you want to do is do all this work moving stones around and send it to your machine and it cuts all this section nice and then this one it'll cut all the circles but cut a line all the way through it right let's see if there's any more um you can't fix the stones in the machine itself yes and that would let you resize both together Cherie's saying yes. So now again I would be inclined to select everything, right click and make it a group and that's your design then that you would then send over to your machine. So Sandra's saying that is going to be an easy step to miss the extra path. It, the, the path really only shows up if you mess about with the design. So if you make your design and then you ungroup it, invariably you're going to get a path line that you're going to have to get rid of. If you, let's just zoom back out a little bit, let's do some tech 
text. So let's go to text and let's just choose this. So if we just type hello, So Sheree is saying that line was the original one when you were working on it too. Okay, so if we come to text and we come back to premium and we come back to the wizard and we'll leave it on SS10 for now and say okay. And you can see if I fill this in with colour. You don't need to fill it in with colour, I'm just, I, I kind of tend to do that in the hope that you can see it better. You can see that this doesn't that look that great in an SS10 stone. So if you've got lots of stones, you could come and try and change it to a smaller stone and that looks better. But if you've not got the smaller stone and you did want to use an SS10, then what you can do to try and see if it looks any different would be, you can see we've got the resize handles around this. So that's telling us that we can edit it without ungrouping it and that's when you kind of get that path line so we can drag this out and make it bigger and it will readjust the number of stones and I found with text using the rhinestone feature it tends to work better if your text is bigger and that kind of seems to be across the board with most fonts so it I suppose if you think about it, most rhinestones with words would probably be on garments. So you wouldn't necessarily have them small anyway, would you? And bear in mind, if you think, you know, our mat here is 12 inches wide, your garment's going to be, you know, probably at least that or bigger. So it tends to work better with text when it's bigger. But because we're typing the text ourselves, it's letting us, you know, adjust and it's giving us a different look. So each time you make this bigger, it's going to recalculate how the text is going to look. But again, if there was something that didn't look right and we right clicked and ungrouped it, you're going to get that path line. So you've got to click away to deselect and then I would just click on a solid part. If I take the colour out just to show you how it would look if you've not got a fill on, can you see these like dash lines in between all the letters? That's the path line. So I would click on a solid part of the design somewhere and move it away and get rid of it. And then you'd be able to say, you know, if there was a stone in here that didn't look quite right and you wanted to, you know, move it, you could move it around. But make sure you've got the basis of the design, the size that you want, because when you go and select it all and right click and make it a group, it won't now let you resize it again. Have you used a single, I have, and that's what I'm gonna go on to very quickly. I'm gonna go into Canvas for computer. And that's what I was saying at the beginning. There's no kind of one step fits all for this. You've got to play around with it. And to be perfectly honest, I did do a little bit of playing around with it earlier on in the week and didn't get great results trying single line fonts. Having said that, I haven't got a true single line font. I've been, well I'm saying I haven't, I might have, it's just a case of finding it within my font list. So is everybody okay with what we've done so far? Just let me know before we go any further because I'm just going to quickly jump into Canvas for computer so we can look at text using different fonts because obviously in online version you've only got the fonts that you've got here which will be the fonts I think we discovered that are on your machine so you might have all of these 
you might not have as many as I've got here. But when you're working in Canvas online, you can only use whatever font you've got over here from within your text icon. So Cherie is saying, can you not resize using the edit menu? So if you go to edit, you can't, the text icon's blocked out, Cherie. It's because we've ungrouped it and in Canvas online, the only way to resize something is to group it. So if I ungroup the whole lot and select one letter and then group it, it still won't let me adjust the sign because each one of these individual stones is technically a separate piece. It's not one complete path. Um, so what's Terry P saying, the built-in single line font that comes with the rhinestone kit works well. Yeah, when you come to the rhinestone kit, you can make your own words. That's a completely different thing than making your own words using one of the fonts. So if I wanted to type, hello, sorry, if I wanted to make rhinestones with the word I'll start again. If I wanted to make rhinestone designs using the text rhinestone feature, I'd have to place them individually. So let's go with H E L L O. Now I can select them all. I can go to edit and I can align them all on the bottom and then I can select them and use the directional arrows on the keyboard and scoot them all over to get kind of like, you know, the placement right, if that makes sense. I'm just doing this quickly. So yes, you can do them with the built-in letters, but these are not fonts. These are cut files. They're not like here where you go to text. These are actual fonts, which means you can double click select them and use the, the letters on your keyboard to type whatever you want. So there is a difference. Does that make sense? So Sandra's saying, so grateful for you showing this, Ashley, making me want to have a go. Cherie is saying height and width sizing. So go to edit. I'm not sure what you mean, Cherie. Because there's no width and height option. This high that I've just written in the font, when you click on your properties tab, you can adjust the width and height. When it's a rhinestone and you go here, you've not got the width and height. Is that what you mean? So now I'm gonna to go to the download version, okay? Because you can, you know, there's a, the functionality is a little bit different. So Charlotte's saying it does make sense and Linda Lee's saying now I understand. Okay, right. So let me close this down and get rid of that. I'm going to leave that all together and I'm going to open Canvas for computer now. So now if we come to the text icon, and we type our word hello, we're using a font, yeah? I'll leave it with the font it's on for now. So the rhinestone feature in 
the download version is over here on the right hand side. Yeah, Cherie, it, it is slightly different in the two versions. So if I come to the rhinestone feature over here on the right, again, you kind of get a similar looking thing to what we had in online. But if you remember when the when we clicked on the rhinestone function in, function in the online, you got all the different options, outline, fill and that kind of thing showing as one box here. They're on this drop down. OK, so you've got the size of your stone up here and you get more options in the download version. So you've got SS6 all the way through to SS48. I don't think there's that many in the online version from memory. So if we leave it on SS10 for now, and then we come to the fill patterns, this is what we had in online. So you can, again, you can say outline. You can see that looks a bit of a mess, but if I drag the size out and adjust it, Now I can make it bigger and it will readjust the size of the stones. And then the number of rhinestones is here. The spacing is, is as I said at the beginning, 0 0.04, I think is the default. And it will tell you in the stone count here that this design at this size would take 260 SS10s. Okay. And then if you come to the edit menu, it will tell you how big it is. So it's 9.47 inches wide by just under three high. So if we wanted to say make this 11 inches wide and say OK, it will resize it and it will recalculate the number of stones for us. So if we go back to the rhinestone count, it's adjusted the size. So Cherie's saying the grey path has also disappeared. What, when I made it into a rhinestone design, is that what you mean? So if we type hello and make it bigger and we come to rhinestones and we'll use a different fill this time. <clears throat> And you can see I'm using the horizontal and the vertical fill. And then if we use the contour fill, you can see how it looks in each of the different fills. So you might not want, see, can you see this one? This one's kind of radiating out from the middle. This is the circular fill, which doesn't look particularly great. And then you've got a hybrid of both. So if you wanted the fill and you want to make it bigger, let's make it just slightly less than 12 inches. I don't particularly like that one. I'd probably go to, I'd probably try grid because it's more of an angular font, but you have to play around with it. So let me see if there's any more comments. Can you change the size of the stones at this point on the design? Well, let's try. So we'll try it on the single one first. Do you mean completely, Vicky? I, I think you, you can completely. So if this one's SS10s and we've got it set to outline, if we wanted to make it SS14, and see how that looks. We can change the size. If we don't think it looks that much different, we want to go SS4, we can change the size. Ellie 
Ellen saying, Ashley, do you need two different versions of the kit depending on what canvas version you are? No, Ellen, you just buy the rhinestone kit, you activate it in canvas online, and then you can use it in either version. Okay? So if on this one we've filled, let's try a different fill. Let's try the contour fill and see how this looks. So this one, let's just say, we think this one might look okay. What's Vicky saying? The fill would look better with the smaller stones. Yeah, so we think this is kind of looking okay. But then we think, well, let's try it with an SS6. So if we take it down to SS6, and when you change the stone size in the download version, you don't have to do the OK like we do in online. It automatically reconfigures it once you've chosen the size. But can you see here on the H, things are looking a bit higgledy-piggledy. So I'm going to try and zoom in on this section of the letter H. Can you see here, they're looking a bit wobbly. So I'm gonna deselect the magnifying glass. I'm going to right click and ungroup. And now it's made all the stones individual. So I'm looking here and thinking, this one might need moving and this one might need moving. And I'm just kind of going in and editing them myself. You know, play kind of playing around with it to see if I can make it look any better. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to come to the layers tab and see what we've got in here. So we've got all the individual stones. And then at the bottom here, we've got our other word. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff in the layers panel because it's looking at, on each one of these stones as an individual item. And again, you've got that path line. I would take that away and delete it. I'm just going to zoom back out to 50. And then if you were happy with all this, I would select it all. My computer's going to go on a go slow now because it's got that many stones in the design. It might even crash. And I'm going to right click and make it a group if it's going to let me. Or the easiest way might be to just go to the layers panel and see if it'll let me group it all here. Won't let me group it. So let's just see, can we drag an imaginary box around everything? It's because there's a lot of data for it to read now because I've ungrouped all that hello at the bottom. So I just want to see if it will let me regroup it, but it's playing up now. So if I right click, and make that a group. Just wait for it to catch up. Right, has anybody got? Right, okay. So I'm going to get rid of this one and I'm going to try a thinner font just because there's a lot of stones here and it's because I'm doing a screen record, it's taking up quite a bit of the memory. So I'm going to just get rid of all that. And I'm going to get rid of all this. And we'll just try a different font. 
I'm going to drag it out make, to make it bigger, first of all, just so you can see it better, because I'm not going to do anything with these designs. And I'm just going to see if I can find a skinny font. See, this is, an, this is a thin font, but it's not a single stroke font. Now, there was one. Hang on. Let me just try and find it. Here we go. Banks Miles sil Single Line. It's called Single Line, but it's not a single line font because you can see there's two lines. This one is okay for drawing. I'm just trying to see if I've actually got a single stroke font anywhere in my other fonts. I've got a lot of skinny fonts, but not any single line fonts that I can readily think of. But this is a skinny font, so let's just say we want to apply the rhinestone to this. I'm going to come to the rhinestone feature again. I'm going to leave it on SS6 for now because it is a skinny font and it might look better in a smaller stone. And we'll go outline and see how it looks. Now, to me, that looks fine. <clears throat> but if we change it to a bigger stone, SS10, that looks okay. Let's try SS20s because that's what the online version used and that doesn't look too bad to be fair. So if I fill this with a nice bright pink, that doesn't look too bad and again we'd be able to resize it. We could shrink it down and make it more squat. But you've kind of got to play around with it. It's, you know, certain fonts look better than others. Certain fonts look better on outline than they do on fill. So if we put the grid fill on this, can you see this one doesn't look that great? Contour's not going to look good, I would have thought, because that radiates out in a circle. So you can see straight away that's not going to... Sorry, contour goes round the edge. Circular radiates out from the middle. So can you see it's wanting to come out in a circle? That's why it looks as though it's distorting it. And hybrid is, um, it's a hybrid of outline and grid. So like I said, right at the very beginning, it's, you're going to have to play around with it. it it's, it, the results you get are going to be determined by the size of the image or text you're going to use. They're going to be determined by the size of the stone. They're also going to be determined by the font, if you're using fonts. So Cherie is saying, I made one by using a skinny font, fill, remove outline, you're left with just a single line. Okay, so let's go back to... We'll go to none, which takes us back to a font. So what Cherie's saying, I made one by using a skinny font fill and then remove outline and you're left with a single line. OK, so this is a skinny font that you've just seen me use. Then you did fill. Do you mean you filled it with colour? Or do you mean you filled it with a pattern, Cherie? I'm just going to have a quick drink while Cherie answers me. filled it with a fill. Right, so we'll try grid. No, that doesn't look good, does it? Let's try contour. That doesn't look good either. Circular. We might need a different font. 
Okay, so that's a kind of mashup between outline and grid. Just remove the outline as it is before applying the stones. Okay, so let's go back to none. Let me remove the fill so we can see what you're saying. So, I don't know which bit you want me to remove, Shuri, I'm not sure. Just remove the outline as it is before applying rhinestones. No, you need to edit the font. Okay. So if I go to edit, oh, sorry, can't see that, can you? And then go to divide, I can don't know what you mean. There's nothing for me to remove. Right, keep the fill, she's saying. Right, so I've got a letter H in a skinny font and I've got a fill on it. So how do you want me to edit it? I'm not sure what you mean. Right, let's start again. Type the word. I'll make it bigger so you can see it. So what did what font did you use, Cherie? Let's try it with impact. Right. So that's impact. Apply the fill. Then apply the rhinestones. Oh, I see what you mean. No, I don't see what you mean. I'm confused. Oh, turn the line off. Okay, right, let's go back. So no. So turn the line off. Then apply the rhinestone design. Let's see if it looks any different. I'm still not sure what you mean though, because that looks exactly the same to me as the other one. The skinny font, okay. So we'll go back to none. We'll change the font um, to that one. We'll, I've not got the outline on. So this is just the fill and then fill it. Ah, with you. But it doesn't look that great. So let's apply. No, that looks even worse. And that looks a bit odd, doesn't it? So let's try grid and then let's try outline. Yeah, I kind of see what you mean now. But again, I think it is going to be determined by what font you use. Yeah, the stroke line. I'm with you now. 
has to be a skinny font, okay? So we need to find a really skinny font and off the top of my head, let's try, let's just take the fill out of this so you can see what this looks like and put the stroke back on it for now. No, you see even that's not very skinny, is it? We need a different font. Um, let's see if we can find another font. Right, here we go. Let's shrink this down a bit. Yeah, some of, definitely that's what I said at the beginning. It, it kind of is determined by what you use. So this is a very skinny one. So let's see. So we'll put a pink fill on it. We'll remove the outline, like you said. So that now gives us this. And then we'll make the stones smaller because I think SS20s will be too big for that. We'll go with SS6 and we'll go... Grid? No, that looks rubbish. So we'll go outline. That looks better. But again, it's got missing parts. Which font is that? This one is Astina. Um, I think it was. Let me just let me just go back to none and I'll tell you. Yeah, it's just give me one minute. I need to edit this. I'll try and put it up on screen, it won't. Oh, that's not how you spell it. Why have I got a gap in there? That should be better. So it's that one, Ellen. Ow, that was my arm. That looks neat, just need to add a few stones. Yeah, so I'm just gonna come, where's my mouse? I'm just gonna come back to outline and then we'll zoom in and have a look at it. So here, where it joins up, I think what I would try and do though first, I would try, let's come back to out to non. So we've basically just got the font and I would weld it because there's overlapped areas. So let's get to edit and go to weld and then try it and see if it makes it look any different. Looks better. Let's zoom in. It does look better welded before you apply the rhinestone. Cherie's saying, do you have Belter font? I don't think I do, but let's have a look. So we'll come to text. We'll type hello. Let's go to the fonts. I don't think I have. It's not one that I readily recognise the name of. No, I've not, Cherie. Where's it from? Or a type one. Uh, let's have a look. I've got a type, but not one. I'm going to make a Stina smaller just to give me a bit more room. Oh, sorry.
Right, I've got this one's, oh, it is a type one. Okay, yeah, I have got a type one, Cherie. I've moved the, van, the banner, Vicky. Um, yeah, you can play around with, around with the spacing. As I said, there's no kind of quick fix. You, you're just going to have to play around with it yourself. Ashley, um, Estina is still on the screen. Yeah, I've moved it now. Defont. Yeah, I've got it, Cherie. So this is called A Type 1. So is that what you used? So if we put a fill on this, remove the stroke, then come to the rhinestones and apply the outline. Oh, perfect. That's lovely. But it's still following the two lines, isn't it? That looks better as an outline. Fill, remove outline, then assign rhinestones. Yeah, that's what I've just done now to this purple one here. So I've filled it, I've removed the outline up here and I've applied the rhinestone design and that's what I get. Is that what you mean? JD Cook is saying yay. <laughs> So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back to none. I'll get rid of that top one. I'll put the line back on this for now. Take the fill out of this. So we've just got the text. So I'm going to right click and make a duplicate. Okay, so the top one, I'm going to fill with a colour and then I'm going to remove the outline and I'm going to apply the stones. This one I'm going to fill with a different colour and I'm going to leave the outline but I'll make it the same colour and then I'll apply the same outline and see what we get. Now to me they look exactly the same. So Cherie is saying but mine came out in a single line. I think I assigned rhinestones before I resized. Okay well I don't know. Like I said, I think you have to play around with the rhinestone feature. Linda Lee is saying, Madeline is a sketch font I use. I don't think I've got that, but we'll have a look. Let's just type hello again and see if we've got anything beginning with M. What was it called? Madeline. Uh, I don't know what fonts I have got half the time, to be honest. I used to have loads when I had my old Mac, but then it crashed and I got this one and I've been putting other fonts on it, but no, I don't appear to have Madeline. Maybe contour will follow the lines. Okay, we'll try that then. So we'll do contour on this bottom one. Ah, so that has followed the middle, okay. But again, you'd have to ungroup it or play around with the spacing. So let's try the spacing on this one. So we've got, um, let's take it. So I've taken it to 0 0.02. 
and it doesn't look much better to be honest it looks better on four so let's take this one down and see that's not looking too bad but it won't seem to let us go to less than 0 0.02 let's take it up more and see what happens that's better if we take it higher oh that's looking really good now isn't it So contour, who said that? Joe, thank you. Contour looks better, but then you play around with the underspacing. Specify the spacing between the contour lines. So the higher the number, the better it became. But like I said, it all goes back to what I said at the beginning. You have got to play with it. It's not like you can type a word or a shape and apply a rhinestone and get the perfect result. You're not going to. And, and I think, you know, when you see people selling rhinestone designs, when you start playing around with something like this yourself, it kind of makes you appreciate how much time they must invest into making you know rhinestone designs that they're selling that definitely looks better on the contour and adjusting the spacing this one was just on the outline and it's followed the the path lines of the outer and the inner So Linda Lee is saying that looks really good. This is an excellent tutorial. So if you've played around with all different fonts and you get to this stage and you think this looks really nice and you think, actually, I might try this font again and you can't remember like me what you've used. If you come back to the stones and come to none, it will take it back to a font and then it will tell you up at the top what font it is. OK. So we know this is now the one that Cherie mentioned, which is called A Type 1. And then again, to apply the rhinestones, you just come back. You'll either choose outline and have a look how it looks. Or now with Joe's suggestion, we're using um, contour. And again, it's put the default spacings back to 0 0.04, which we know looks better on 0 0.08 on here on this side so you, you you just do have to play around with it sandra's saying would you recommend buying an assortment of rhinestones it depends what you're going to do sandra i think the ones i've got the most of i've got i think i've got ss hang on i've got the box at the side of me just give me one second I'll tell you which ones I, I've got and I mean I don't even do a lot of rhinestone designs as you know so let me just get my box out and see which ones I've got and I'll tell you but if you watched the live that I did a few weeks ago where I was actually cutting something I did show you all the sizes I've got so I've got um, SS16 SS20 I've got in a few different colours. I've got SS tens, more SS tens, SS tens, SS tens, SS ten, and SS twenty. So I've not even got any SS sixes. The smallest ones I've got are SS tens, and I've got them in the clear rhinestones, and I've got them in pink, and I've got them in a kind of a goldy colour. And then I've got a stray pack of SS16s, they're mixed colours. And then I've got SS20s in clear. So again, I suppose it depends what design you're making and what size. I mean, I think if it's something that you're just getting into and you've got the rhinestone kit, I think what I'd be inclined to do, let me just move this box off my desk. I'd be inclined to make my design in canvas 
until you get it how you want it in the size you want it and how it looks and then buy the size of stone accordingly like we know this one looks good now and this is an SS6 if we change this to an SS10 let's see how it looks look it looks awful now as an SS10 so I think I would probably make your design, size it to the size you want it, get it looking how you want it, and then buy the stone accordingly. Or just buy yourself a few different random packets. I wouldn't go mad, I wouldn't buy a lot. Just buy, you know, maybe some SS6s, 10s, maybe a, an odd 20, and just play around with it. Um... Right, let me see what I'm missing now before we go. This has been great and just got here. You guys are all great together. Yeah, we are. We all kind of thrash it out together, don't we? What is the price of the kit in different countries? Um, here in the UK, I have a feeling it's about 60 something pounds. Sometimes it goes on offer. Um, you know, I don't know. So you're saying it's about 100 Canadian for you, Vicky. Cherie's saying that sounds about right. You think yours was 95 Australian. Julia is saying, do you have a dealer and do they have sales? Julia, if you're talking to me, I would mostly use Maker's Superstore. Excuse me. Um, they do have sales from time to time. They've just had a 21% off everything a few days ago. But if it's one of them things, you're just going to have to shop around. Did they come with the rhinestone kit? Sandra, some of them did. I can't remember which ones. Some I already had from having um, a Puzzles rhinestone kit previously. But yeah, the kit does come with some stones. If you go and find the rhinestone kit online it will tell you what size stones are in the pack vicky say my brother dealer doesn't have much in stock they seem to have a lot of heat, heat transfer hand, goodness sake i can't speak heat transfer vinyl and not much else any brother dealer can get the kits for you yeah lynn is saying are they hot fix rhinestones is that correct yes it is lynn they are hot fix rhinestones I fixed mine with my Easy Press a few weeks ago. Like I say, Lynn, if you just go back, go on here on my YouTube channel, go in the go to the playlist and look for the live playlist. And I cut some rhinestones a few weeks ago and I set them with my Easy Press. Cherie is saying yes, but beware, these are lots of cheap deals on eBay, but I wouldn't waste my time on them. I have had so many failures from eBay stones. Uh, Ellie is saying brother rhinestone kits. Cherie Tropics, thank you. Canadian always has a higher dollar number. The kit on, our, on Amazon comes with a hundred stones. Yeah, mine definitely came with rhinestones. It's just that I've put my old rhinestones from a puzzles machine that I had like, you know, maybe six, eight years ago. I've just put them all in the same box. But it definitely comes with rhinestones. And if you get the SDX Disney machine like I've got, you get a small amount of rhinestone media and rhinestones with that because there's about five or so designs in the SDX that are rhinestone patterns. So you, you won't get access to all the stuff in canvas, but you can cut the pre-installed rhinestone designs that are in the Disney machine and they give you a small kit. Michael sells hotfix rhinestones, but maybe only a couple of sizes, Vicky's saying. Sandra's saying, thank you so much for all this, Ashley. I've learned so much. Great. Well, if you've got the kit, just have a play with it. As I say, we're working a bit backwards because 
I know I've shown how to cut the designs. I did them in a live last year. I did them in a live a few weeks ago. And I think I've got previous videos on the channel pre-recorded. But somebody definitely messaged me and said, had I done anything in Canvas? And I thought I had. And it, when I looked, it appeared I hadn't. So that's why we're doing this. So it's kind of a bit backwards the way we're doing it. But Mandy G saying, great session. Thank you, Ashley. Ellen is saying, thank you, Ashley, for the great tutorial. Oh, fab, guys. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I've used Hotfix rhinestones and crystals for many years on garments, but only just started with the scan and cut. Okay. And do you find, Cherie, that the rhinestones, you know, hold up to being washed? I've got a t-shirt that generally comes out at Christmas that I put um, a tree on it several years ago. But I only wear it at Christmas, so, you know, it does get washed, but I maybe only wear it one day. So I, I don't I don't do anything with rhinestones that I would consistently wash and wear. Oh, the wand, yes, yeah, stone by stone, that's tedious. You didn't get the small rhinestone kit with your Disney machine. Okay, maybe it was just on the first ones that came out. I know I did. It was part of like an extra in my box. And Vicky has the wand as well for applying hot fix stones one by one. Blimey, I bet that took some time. You're welcome, Lynn. Cindy is asking what model scan and cut I use. I use the SDX2200 Disney machine, but people on here use different machines. I previously had a CM900 and a CM600 Cindy, but I've had my Disney model now for just over a year. So Cherie's saying they do last if they're properly affixed. Okay. So I'm guessing now I've got the easy press which gives you quite a good amount of pressure and heat. They would probably last if I did something for regular use. So Janet's saying, I've not got this kit, but definitely thinking about getting it now. Turned inside out. Yeah, that's probably what I would do. Or maybe even put them in um, one of those laundry bags. Yes, they stay put since the wand gets good and hot. They should hold up well when applied with the heat press. Okay, that I showed a few weeks ago. Yeah, great, brilliant. I have stuck millions of stones. Oh, because yeah, you do um, you do dancing, don't you? I have stuck millions of stones on my Latin and ballroom dresses in my time. No machines then, just fingers and glue. Oh no, <laughs> that's even worse than the wand. <laughs> that is that is hard work, Lynn doing it that way but yeah of course you would do wouldn't you because they're full of they're like encrusted with jewels aren't they i didn't even think about that wow yeah right the numbers are dropping so has anybody got any last minute questions because i've been on here nearly two hours tonight the one comes in handy if any stones do come off in the wash so you can reapply new ones okay that's a, a good a good comment, Terry. Okay, so just to recap, for anybody that's not been and had a look at the forum, go to my website, go and have a look at the forum. You've got to join, you've got to sign up first. I <laughs> know that's what I thought, Cherie. Paul Lynn. Um, card number eight, deadline sketches tomorrow. The quilt along is going to start in February. There's a, a product list on the forum for, for what you're going to need for the quilt along. But there's no information yet about the coupon code or the prize that makers are going to offer. That's going to start being advertised around about the beginning of February. <clears throat> Um, and 
just going back to the quilt along, when I said at the beginning I'm going to be doing a block a month, I'm going to do one block a month for four months. On the fifth month I'm going to assemble all the blocks, square it all up and then there's going to be like a grand finale which is going to be live where I actually make it into the cushion and it's going to be a zip fastened cushion. That's going to be in June. Patty's saying thank you so much. Anita's saying thank you so much. Barbara's saying thank you, everyone, for the tips and the tuition. Love you guys on here. Thanks so much for all the time. I miss you when I'm sleeping. I miss you too, Cherie. Terry's saying thanks so much. Ashley and everyone for all the good tips. Brilliant. Right, I'm going to go, guys. Unless somebody puts a question up in the next couple of seconds, I'm going to say goodbye and I'll see you all next week. No idea what we're going to do next week. Might be back to the machine again. Um, I have to see if I can come up with anything between now and next Sunday. But we've done Canvas Workspace for the last two Sundays, so I think maybe something on the machine next week. Cool one, Cherie's saying. Heather's saying thank you. So helpful as always. Yeah, great. I love it because you all come up with ideas for me. And that's one of the reasons... I thought the forum would be good as well. Thank you, Ashley. I was watching without the sound for a bit as my dad called and then talked to mum. Oh, it's all right, but I got the gist. No problem. Thumbs up, everyone. Right, I'm going. Speak to you all next week. Take care. Stay safe. See you for now. Bye.